Jeremy Hunt unveiled the British ISA this week, and whilst we may be waiting a while for it to actually become available, in this video I'm going to take a look at how I would go about investing £5,000 into a British ISA. If you want to learn everything we know about the British ISA so far, then be sure to check out my last video where I go through the consultation document that was released in detail. But to quickly sum up, the British ISA will give investors an additional £5,000 allowance on top of their main £20,000 ISA allowance, but with the big difference being that this additional 5 k can only be invested in UK companies. To be clear, we do not know for sure what sort of investments will be eligible, as the consultation is yet to be completed, but we do have the government's initial ideas. According to the consultation document, they are looking at defining eligible UK companies as ordinary shares in companies that are incorporated in the UK and either listed on a UK recognised stock exchange or admitted to trading on a UK recognised exchange. They also reference how collective investment vehicles, so funds and trusts, will most likely be eligible, with the limitation that at least 75% of the value of the underlying investments held by the fund are invested in eligible UK companies. Again, nothing is confirmed, but I'm going to use common sense in this video to go for investments that I think will be eligible. Regardless of what ends up happening with the British ISA, I hope this video will also be interesting for those looking for UK investment ideas more generally for their stocks and shares ISA or SIP. Before I begin, always remember these videos are not financial advice or a recommendation to invest in any security featured. When investing your capital is at risk and past performance never guarantees future results. The additional disclaimer of this video is that details may change and the UK ISA may never happen if Labour win the upcoming election and reverse the decision. So I'll go through three different types of investments in this video, investment trusts, ETFs and individual stocks. For each type I'll go into how I'd go about picking an investment as well as look at some specific options I'd consider. Firstly, one of the most tempting options to include in a British ISA for me would be an investment trust. To very quickly define an investment trust, it's a type of publicly listed company which you can purchase shares in like any other company, but it can be better understood as a type of fund. An investment trust will have an investment manager which invests in other companies and seeks to generate growth and or income for shareholders. There's a lot of other things you should know about investment trusts, such as that they are close-ended and they can use gearing, but I'll keep it simple in this video and get back to the point. How would I select an investment trust for a British ISA? Well, we have to remember that the UK ISA consultation paper stated that for collective investment vehicles, at least 75% of the value of the investments held by the fund should be in eligible UK companies. I have seen some people saying that they would use their British ISA allowance to invest in popular high growth trusts such as Scottish Mortgage, but I doubt that will be permitted. If we look at the Scottish Mortgage portfolio, all of their top positions are in overseas stocks and they'll certainly not meet the criteria of having 75% of underlying investments in UK listed companies. So whilst it would be nice, we can strike Scottish Mortgage off the list of possible investments based on what we know so far. The government may well end up permitting it, but that would be pretty silly in my opinion, given the aims of the policy. So how would I find potential eligible investment trusts? The absolute best resource for investment trusts that I have come across is the AIC website. I'd use their investment company screener, and I'd use the AIC sector filter. If we scroll down, we can see they have a number of UK filters. The property ones will all be real estate investment trusts. So if you're wanting to use your British ISA allowance to invest in property, they'd be well worth looking into, and I can't see why these would not be eligible for the British ISA. However, they also have a number of other options for UK equities, and I think these will be more popular. One of the most popular categories I'd imagine is UK equity income, especially for dividend investors. And in this category, I think the City of London Investment Trust is worth a look into. It has the objective to provide long-term growth in income and capital by investing in equities listed on the LSE. This trust will certainly meet the requirements set out in the consultation paper. As shown in the portfolio tab, it is 87.2% invested in the UK. The top holdings are popular UK companies such as BAE Systems, Relex and AstraZeneca. The great thing about this trust is that it is an AIC dividend hero, meaning it has grown its dividends for more than 20 years in a row. The current yield is a very attractive 5.12% and the reason why they can always grow their dividend even when the market is performing poorly is because investment trusts can use their reserves to top up dividend payments. This is a big advantage over open-ended funds and can make trusts like this especially attractive for those seeking to draw an income from their investments. 
However, as I'm young, I'm really not too bothered about income and I invest for total returns. So how I'd select an investment trust for my British ISA is that I'd go through all these various categories and try and find a growth slash total return oriented fund to invest in. I may well have my work cut out when I'm limited to UK companies, but from a quick look, the Mercantile Investment Trust, Fidelity Special Values and Bailey Gifford UK Growth Trust may well be worth looking into. So that is how I'd go about selecting an investment trust for a British ISA, but what I'm really hoping is that ETFs will be permitted. Although they're not explicitly mentioned in the consultation document, I think it would be rather silly for them not to be permitted, and I would imagine that as long as they meet the requirement of having the majority of their underlying investments in UK companies, there would not be a problem. When it comes to picking a UK stock ETF, the obvious options are a FTSE 100 or FTSE 250 tracker. But to be honest, they're not really attractive to me. They have a terrible track record, and using just ETFs, ETF, we can see that over the past five years, a FTSE 100 ETF has delivered a return of only 6.47%. And even if we include dividends, the performance is only 29.67%. So that really has been a disappointing investment and not particularly appealing at all. Adding a FTSE 250 ETF to the chart, we can see that the situation there is no better, and in fact it has delivered an even lower total return. So yet again, not attractive at all. Although past performance does not guarantee future results, I'm personally not convinced that the FTSE 100 or FTSE 250 offer good long-term investments. However, I wouldn't go as far as saying that the FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 are full of terrible companies. I just think that an ETF tracking these indexes is not a good investment for me as it forces me to include all the low growth mature companies that I'd never pick to invest in individually and ones that look unlikely to deliver strong growth anytime soon. For example, if we look at the top 10 of a FTSE 100 ETF, a huge part of your investment will be into oil companies such as Shell and BP, and a bank, HSBC, and then even a tobacco company such as British American Tobacco has a significant weighting. Whilst oil companies, banks, and tobacco companies can deliver periods of strong returns, they'd be far from the top of my list of great long-term investment. For that reason, what I believe is the best ETF for a British ISA is the Wisdom Tree UK Quality Dividend Growth ETF, ticker UGRW. Regular viewers of this channel will be very familiar with this ETF, as I have mentioned it a lot. It uses a quality and momentum filter to ensure only the highest quality improving UK stocks are included. Quality refers to companies that are profitable, have high returns on equity and capital employed, and also have sound balance sheets. It's well documented that high quality businesses outperform low quality ones. And it's just common sense to me that quality businesses can make good investments. And what this means is that through UGRW, you can get the benefits of investing in the UK, such as decent dividends and cheap valuations, whilst also avoiding a lot of the low growth, mature or declining companies that push down the FTSE performance. If we look at the top 10 holdings, in my opinion, it is much more attractive than the FTSE 100 top 10. The company with the greatest weighting is Relex, which is on a great run, but then there's also a number of other high quality popular businesses here as well. Whilst it's not perfect, and if you view all holdings, you will find some questionable companies in there, I do think overall this is by far the most attractive UK ETF. In my opinion, the UK market is one that can particularly benefit from these factor filters such as quality and momentum, and the Wisdom Tree ETF will apply those factors for you. And although this ETF has only been launched recently, so a performance comparison is not much use, we can see that so far it is absolutely smashing a FTSE 100 tracker. I won't go into much more detail of this ETF as it is a good candidate for a video of its own, but focusing on the topic of this video, this would certainly be my number one choice for an ETF in a British ISA. Let's just hope the government actually permits it and do not come up with some stupid rules that end up making ETFs ineligible. Lastly, I'll go through how I'd pick individual UK stocks for a British ISA. Whilst I'd prefer to have the bulk of my investments in an investment trust or ETF for diversification, I'm also a fan of the occasional individual stock pick. When it comes to picking individual stocks for a UK ISA, I'd be very careful to avoid value traps and yield traps, as the UK market is especially full of them. Value traps refers to companies that may seem cheap from a valuation perspective, such as the PE ratio, but they are very cheap for a reason and can continue to get even cheaper or just have a drop in earnings that make them not cheap at all anymore. For example, St. James's Place, a UK wealth management company, can in my opinion be considered an example of a previous value trap. The share price is down over 60% over the past year, and if we look at the chart, we can see that a lot of those downward movements happened in one day, so investments have suffered a number of days of heart-wrenching drops. 
And turning to the stock report on the Stockopedia, we can see that the forward PE ratio is currently only 6.8, and the PE ratio has been low for a long time now, so it's a good example of a stock that has been cheap for a reason and just keeps on dropping. It may well have a turnaround, but investors from a year ago will need a huge turnaround to make their money back. Whilst we're on this page, I think St. James's Place can also double up as an example of a dividend yield trap as well. A yield trap refers to stocks with high dividend yields, which therefore might tempt in dividend investors. However, there can be a trap because the dividend payments are completely offset by a decline in share price, as is the case here. And there may also be a risk of the dividend being cut in the future if a company has poor performance and can't maintain their dividend. So yield traps and value traps are not the topic of this video, but given the state of the UK market, I can't really talk about UK stocks without mentioning them. To give myself the best chance of picking good UK stocks for a British ISA, or at least avoiding the disasters, I'd focus on high quality businesses. This is basically doing myself what the Wisdom Tree ETF does for me. In a recent video, I used a quality momentum screen to find some of the best UK dividend stocks available. I did go through a few of them in detail, so be sure to check out that video. I use Stockopedia to do these screens, which does make it very easy and simple to do, and I do leave a link in the description to get 25% off a subscription if you do want to sign up to it. However, you can analyse companies yourself for free using free resources if you really want to, such as Yahoo Finance, but it'd definitely take a lot longer and you'd be unable to automatically screen the market. Of course, a screen alone should not be relied upon and you should always do further research into companies before investing in them. It's also worth noting that some UK listed companies may not be eligible for the British ISA. If we return to the consultation document, the government suggests that eligible shares will be incorporated in the UK and listed on a UK stock exchange. So to give an example, of a share that may not be eligible, we can turn to the Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company. This is a UK stock in the sense that it is listed on the London Stock Exchange, but it is actually headquartered in Switzerland, and I'd imagine a company like this would not be eligible. So it's worth bearing that in mind when planning how you'd use a British ISA. Returning to my screen, this does have a dividend growth filter as well, but that can always be removed if you do not care about dividends. And this is just one way of finding some stocks to look further into. There are many other screens you could apply, and this is just one example of how I would find companies to research further. Another thing you could do is to look into recent stock market winners such as Rolls-Royce and BAE Systems and do your own further research to decide whether they still represent a good opportunity. Momentum can be a powerful thing, so try to avoid automatically writing off winners because you think you're too late. They may well have a lot further to climb. I think the main thing to remember with individual stock investing is that it is undeniably more risky than investing through an ETF or investment trust. I personally would not have individual stocks as the largest positions in my overall portfolio. So that is three different types of investments that I would consider for a British ISA. Picking between all of them, what I'd likely do is use the Wisdom Tree UK Quality Dividend Growth ETF as the core of the British ISA portfolio, and then have individual stocks and maybe some investment trusts as satellite positions. I can also see how an argument can be made to have an investment trust as the core of the portfolio, but in my example, I do prefer UGRW, and in practice, what I think I'd do is contribute 3.5 to 4K to UGRW, and then allocate 1 to 1.5K for individual stocks and investment trusts. Of course, I just want to reiterate this is all hypothetical and the exact details of the British ISA are yet to be confirmed. In reality, the British ISA may never come. And for me, like many others, I do not even max out my main 20k ISA allowance. So there's little chance of me utilizing this additional 5k allowance as well. However, I thought this video was a fun and interesting topic to cover. And it may be useful for those who are looking to include UK investments in their main ISA anyway. How would you use a British ISA? That is it for this video. If you'd like to learn more about exciting ETFs and other investments, you might want to sign up to my newsletter via the link below. You'll gain access to my ETF cheat sheet, which allows you to compare all the best ETFs alongside receiving additional newsletter content. For now, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thank you for watching.